Okay, welcome to this short video on some of the MATLAB tools we'll be using during this course. I'll assume that you are familiar with MATLAB and jump right to it. So first off, I'll show you how you can use the double uh, percentage mark to do block execution such that you can control enter, you'll execute just this part and then afterwards you could execute this part. Another thing I want to talk about is uh, how you name your variables. So you can see here uh, I set up a small example on how to do Monte Carlo integration of some uh, function f of x. Okay, and this uh, function takes one input x that's normally distributed mean zero variance one. So this is just an example to to have some concrete to talk about. So as, as you can see, I have implemented a, a, an anonymous function here. This is one way to do a function in MATLAB. Uh, you do the add and then parentheses and then the input variables. So if we had, let's say, one more variable y, we will do it like this, that it could be like like this. Okay, but we'll just have one dimensional functions. As you can see, I, I tried to implement kind of a naming convention that's easy to understand, so you have the function f, the number of uh, draws, then I take uh, this number of uniform draws and then I calculate the actual draws taking the inverse CDF of a normal evaluated at these uniform draws. This is not important but what I want to highlight is the naming conventions, right? So it's rather straightforward to read this code even if you don't really understand what's going on. Okay. In addition to this I'll highly recommend that you you comment on your code so instead of just having raw code like this you should try to make some uh, informative statements about what's going on okay so this obviously is the number of Monte Carlo draws okay and you can keep on doing this so this is uniform draws and so forth okay what I do down here is I take uh, the mean of the function evaluated at these draws. Okay. So when you get back to this code, let's say a couple of weeks from now, it, it'll be much easier for you to understand again. Okay. So another thing I want to talk about is how in this course we'll use uh, what's called structs. Uh, okay, so structs are uh, a very easy way to have multiple parameters or data collected in kind of one variable, you could say. Okay. So a struct is defined in the way that, let's say I define a struct called MP for model parameters. You'll see this a lot of times doing the exercises. So MP dot and then, for example, beta. So beta is a model parameter in, in one of our models. I can set this to, for example, 0 0.97. Uh, and then, for example, if I want to have more parameters in this struct, I just do mp. Dot, it could be a row, and this might be, let's say, a half. Okay. So what I have now is I have a struct. Uh, the struct is mp, and this mp struct contains two variables, beta and row. Okay. So if I run this block of code. Uh, control enter and take a look at my workspace so if I see what's in MP I now have beta and row and I can do this dynamically to say like okay now I want the model parameters to be some vector so now model parameters will contain beta row and a vector of dimension 100 times uh, by 1. Okay. This is a really nice way of carrying along a lot of parameters simultaneously without passing a lot of arguments to functions. And this leads me to another thing is the, the fact that you should try to use functions as much as possible. Um, so sometimes we'll avoid using functions uh, to illustrate some point but you should always, if you can, uh, write very precise functions that are very fast and efficient to do one thing and then uh, in 
include these functions rather than having a long script of uh, 3,000 lines or something like that. Um, okay, another thing that we'll be doing in this course is that b when you use functions, you can only store one function in one M file at a time. So this is a little bit annoying in MATLAB, but one workaround is to construct a static class. I'll set up a new script. This is a blank script, and in order to construct this new class that's going to contain all of our functions, I have to write class def for class define, and then I give it a name. So in this case, I just write fun because it's going to contain our functions. Okay, and I need an instant statement there. So a, a, a class can contain properties and a lot of st stuff, but we'll only have in this class some methods, basically functions. And all these methods are static. So we we write like this methods static. And I need an end statement again. So this is now a class called fun. Okay, so let's save this one to to the class fun. Okay. So I can include in this class some functions. So let me do an example. So I just write function. It's a function that gives me y, and it's called func for function, and it takes input x. And I need an end statement again. Okay, so this could be this could be y equals x to the power two, for example. Okay, and I save this function. So with this static class called fun I can now call functions in this function okay so at the moment there's only one function called func so let's try so if I do it in my workspace try and run fun func enter what one input let's say one it returns the square of one it's one let's try two and it works okay so going back so what's really nice is that then I can include multiple functions. So let's say I have one function that returns some other. So I call this let's say just func1. Also one input. But now I don't want the square, I just want the twice the input of x. So set equals two times of x. Okay. So now this class contains two functions. And when you want to refer to these functions inside other functions, you need to include this pre-fun. Okay, so let's say I wanted to have basically the same function. So I could have fun func of x, but now I want to square that result, okay? So I'm taking the square of whatever this function returns. Okay, and I saved it. Let's see, let's see if I write again fun fun two it's four, but if I do it funk one, I get sixteen, okay? So this is a really nice way of including multiple functions in one M file. Uh, so we'll be using that and what's really cool is that when you want to pass on several arguments to this function you could include th these structs so so imagine that I have in my class some function that whatever it's called let's say Monte Carlo integration let's say that and I just want to pass on a, a bunch of input arguments for example all the model parameters that's in this struct, okay? I just do it like this. And then inside of this function, the the Monte Carlo integration function, I know that I have all of these input arguments. So this is really a nice way of writing compact code and you can easily update whatever is in these structs and pass them to this function without having to in change the input arguments everywhere you use this function. So that's a really nice feature and we'll be using this so so that's why I wanted to to talk a little bit about it.